Hello and welcome to the vlog. I'd left my solar panels tilted slightly to get the maximum morning power once the sun rose over the trees to the left, and this worked a treat with more than 22 amps loading up my battery bank with lovely electricity before I even started cruising. By midday-ish I was ready to be off and headed away from Fradley going straight past this fuel boat which I remember buying diesel from once, I think while I was on the Oxford Canal 18 months ago. Look how lush everything is. The mixture of sunshine, rain and a pandemic has let nature go wild. Round the corner, and regular viewers will recall this being the spot where I gently thumped that other boat a year ago while we queued for the lock. Another queue this day, albeit somewhat shorter, one waiting and one about to come down. I lined up on the lock landing, thankfully without any collisions, and waited my turn. What is it about this lock that makes it so busy? Another boat came up behind as well. You might think I'm about to barge through the lock gates, but the lovely folk from that boat behind had gone up to open them, telling me to get back aboard and bring the boat in, so I did. I felt quite regal with the gates opening as I approached. You often find that people see a solo boater and happily offer to do lots of legwork for you. Out the other side and a beautiful bit of cruising. Again, for the avoidance of doubt, it's a wide-angle lens making this look speedy. Top speed in reality was about 3 miles an hour. After a while, there's the unmistakable sight of Rugeley Power Station on the horizon. But I'd got Hansacre to go through first, and the housing development on the edge of town looked like it's back in full swing. I've shown this spot before, but I was rather pleased with the reflection of the building on the water. A good squadron of new ducklings here. And a pigeon having a bath. On the exit from Hansacre is a one-way bit of canal with no traffic management and a bend so you can't see what's coming. The CRT instructions say to put off a crew member and send them ahead, but I don't have one. Luckily, another boat coming up behind me with two people aboard said no worries, they'd lead the way. I thought this meant they'd do as the CRT suggest, but no, they had a much more practical approach to the problem and simply blipped their horn several times on the approach and then carried on regardless. With them forging out the path, I followed close behind. Ploughing on through here just by tooting the horn and hoping for the best is a much more narrow boatery way of doing things, so Quite why I was thinking we'd put anyone off and do it like that, I have no idea, but it makes much more sense. Just toot the horn and go. It's what I do for every other blind corner. Why not a blind tunnel? And you know what? We're through and safe. Still, it is reassuring to go after someone else, I have to be honest. They were lovely, as were these. That's quite the decent family. Halfway through Rugeley and more help, 
from an approaching boat at this time who tipped me off as he went past about workboats underneath a bridge up ahead. Sure enough, things were at a standstill, but the CRT folk doing the work beckoned that boat and me through at a cautious pace. But what on earth was going on? It appears the Canal and River Trust are repiling the bank here, which is always good to see. With two large supermarkets either side of the canal here, Rugeley is normally jam-packed, but the effects of limited boating at present were plain to see, so I took my chance to moor briefly and nip to the shops. I don't like staying in towns though, so with the fridge restocked I headed off again, not intending to go far, but I did want to find a tree to moor under, as the next two days were due to be very hot indeed. With the light starting to fade, I'd had enough and pulled in here for the night. Under a tree, but it wasn't going to keep me cool the next day, so I'd move again in the morning. With two scorching days in the forecast and no aircon on the boat, it would draw too much power. The way to stay cool in a narrow boat is more in shade and open the doors and windows. My quest was to find a suitable spot, but I also, paradoxically, wanted somewhere with sunshine so I'd get solar power. But I didn't go very far, just this little scoot half a mile or so up the canal to what seemed like an idyllic little spot. And while I moored there, the world's biggest armada of Canada geese drifted gently by, newer members of the family visible in the middle of the pack. It is another absolutely stunning, glorious day, apparently likely to be the hottest day of the year so far today. Temperatures up to 34 degrees Celsius. It's just gone nine o'clock in the morning, so at the moment, I'm guessing it's about 22. It was a very warm night, skies are blue, the sun is out. I don't have huge plans for today. I would like to get somewhere where I have a little more afternoon shade. Where I am at the moment, I've got shade in the morning, but it isn't that hot then. Then I get solar in the afternoon, but the boat really does warm up quite a bit. So I want to kind of swap that round so I get solar in the morning and shade in the afternoon. Whether I'll find a suitable place, I don't know. I'm going to go a couple of miles further north through a couple of locks to Great Haywood Junction, possibly fill up the water tank if there's nobody using the tap, and then turn left onto the uh, Staffordshire and Worcestershire Canal, the northern part of that, which I've never been on before. At least that was the plan but I wouldn't make it there for another few days, as it turned out. Isn't this just lovely, though? Another memory here of the field where the sheep fell in when I was moored opposite. I see they've now put an electric fence up. This bench looks so lonely in that massive field. It needs a little friend. But its friend is hiding behind the flower beds. Let's sit back and enjoy a happy little cruise.
I sometimes get asked why narrowboaters don't use VHF radios. No need, you just shout across at each other as you pass. Just had a useful warning from the couple on that boat that there is a tree down just before the lock. Apparently there is space to go past and they have reported it to the Canal and River Trust but I just need to look out for it so uh, a useful little heads up there. There it is and indeed blocking most of the canal width. This is where you're glad you don't have fresh paintwork as even squeezing in close to the left hand bank the branches are going to slide like nails down a blackboard along the right hand side of the cabin. Here goes I didn't want to ground myself on the shallow edge of the canal either. No worries, and here's the lock. Like so many, it's picture postcard pretty. I tied the boat to the lock landing and went up the path to set the lock. Another boat was just leaving, so that meant the lock was full and I'd need to start by emptying it to bring the water down to my boat's level. This is good exercise. With the lock empty, I opened the gates, closed the paddles and brought the boat in. Then I took a line up to tie around a bollard at the front. I do this when going up in a log to stop the boat crashing backwards when you open the top paddles to let the water in. Some folk leave the engine in gear, but I don't like that system and prefer to use a rope, though you must keep an eye on it to make sure it doesn't end up taut. I always tie the rope first, then shut the back gates, as this means the boat is secured before doing anything else. Just a little foible of the way I like to do things. Every boater has their own way and will insist theirs is right. Gently with the top paddles to start the water coming in, See the gate paddles starting to open there with that water rushing through? Ground paddle first, gate paddle after the boat's risen a bit is the general gist. Five minutes or so later and the boat was up, ready for me to open the top gate and drive out. It is the done thing to make sure you've closed all the paddles before you go to stop any water leakage and wastage. It was only 10am and the day was hotting up already, so I abandoned the plan to get round the junction at Great Haywood and looked for another tree to moor under. Alongside the grounds of the Shugborough estate, this one looked promising. The sun was on the right and would move westwards to the left through the day. If I did this properly, I could have the front of the boat in shade and the back with the solar panels still in sunshine, so I went for this spot. Perfecto mundo. The sun would keep the panels churning out the power, but the saloon would stay in the shade while I sat and edited videos. And yes, there is a little shade on that one panel at the time I took this shot, but the batteries were so full by this point it didn't matter a jot. Like a traffic warden, as soon as you park, a swan turns up to fine you. Payment in food. Cheerio.